All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to attend today's webinar. Uh, my name is Keegan Olson. I am the Director of Solution Delivery at Apex IT. I'm going to be facilitating the webinar today. Uh, but before we begin, though, um, we, we have most of the lines muted, but um, just to ensure that we don't have any uh, background, unintentional background noise, if you wouldn't mind just muting your lines as well. Uh, we're going to have a, a section at the end of the, the session for, for questions. So if, if you do have questions throughout this presentation, you can utilize the, the WebEx chat, and that will, that will help you, um, that will be a place for uh, answering the questions and asking the questions that you might have as we go through the presentation. So in today's webinar, we're going to be talking about uh, how HR Help Desk can enhance HR service delivery, how it enhances co collaboration in HR, and how it can be leveraged by HR organizations in a variety of organizational structures, including self shared services. I'll be talking about common challenges we see, some of our experiences, some industry trends, what HR Help Desk is, and, and how it's been leveraged and implemented by various institutions. So a little bit of background uh, of who we are. Uh, Apex IT is a platinum implementation partner with Oracle, which is the top, top level any partner can attain. We've been partnering with uh, and leading institutions through service to, their service delivery initiatives and other CRM initiatives since 1997. We're involved in the majority of the HR help desk uh, implementations with Oracle. So we have got a lot of experience in HR service delivery and HR help desk. Thankfully, you're not completely stuck with me today. I also have a few colleagues uh, from Oracle to help me out. Hilary Bree is a senior sales consultant with Oracle, and she'll be giving us a stellar demonstration of HR help desk application to wet your whistles on some of the products robust features. We also have Robin uh, Valadum. Robin is the HR help desk product manager with Oracle. He's going to be giving us a glimpse into, the, into Oracle's product roadmap uh, for HR help desk and some of the upcoming HR help desk enhancements. So again, if you have any questions during the presentation, please use the, the WebEx chat and we'll do our best to answer them at the end of the session. Sound good? All right, let's get, let's get going here. So again, today we're talking HR shared services, HR service delivery, and how HR Help Desk is tied into both. So to start, let's talk about HR service delivery and how does it tie into HR shared services? Well, at its core, the basis for shared services is really service delivery, right? The whole point of uh, the, it's the whole point of it all. One can define service delivery as simply an application and management of various services provided to populations supported by HR. Those populations in, in, in uh, most institutions include employees, faculty, retirees, termed employees, dependents, beneficiaries, vendors, etc. An important question to ask is, how does your organization deliver service and how is it managed? Service can be provided to these populations you support through many channels. Typically, most organizations have things like phone, email, walk-ups, portals, published knowledge base, employee manager self-service, and some even through social media. Every institution we work with very slightly with that respect. Uh, some, some institutions have the who you know culture where employees will call the same person about issues they have. Others, uh, other institutions we work with are have a more tech savvy employee population, and they typically want to leverage those. Those employees want to leverage those online tool capabilities versus calling someone. But in in in, in most situations, we see a blend, blending of both worlds, meaning that they, that most organizations have to support multiple channels, and the support channels you support definitely should fall in line with their employee demographics. But obviously, don't don't fret if you're lever you're not leveraging all those channels. Most in institutions commonly are not. Uh, a lot of times, because they simply they either lack those capabilities, meaning they don't have a tool to handle those channels, or they've not fully grown into them yet. Most simply allow employees to use the transactional ch channels, phone or traditional channels, phone, email, and walkups. They they share group inboxes and have a basic phone system to route calls that they received. You know, the press one for benefits, press two for payroll. I'm sure that sounds familiar to, to some of you uh, attending this session. And many don't even have a centralized application for, for managing these employee interactions. So servicing by those more advanced channels just even, isn't even possible. So there's obviously challenges and, and inefficiencies with those situations. And that's really where an application like HL, HR Help Desk comes into play. 
So let's explore explore the business drivers for, for looking into improving service delivery. There are really many reasons why. Often it's simply the need for a centralized case management system, but some others include pressure to reduce costs, desperate systems in HR, or, or maybe not, 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 no system in HR at all. And they have manual and labor intensive processes, inefficient usage of senior HR staff, minimal reporting, the list goes on, right? I'm sure some of these all resonate with, uh, some of these resonate with many of you. All of these potentially lead to inconsistent service to the employee, which can in turn lead into further inquiries and decreased satisfaction in your organization. It can be, it can be a, a, a vicious cycle. So how do we improve service delivery? What, do, what have we seen work? Well, there's a variety of ways and methods to do this, and, and it takes time. Change management is definitely a critical piece in, in, throughout this process. It's not always easy, but the long-term benefits are really real. Migrating to, into shared service environment is typically the first step. There's many benefits for doing so, pri primarily to improve service delivery, but it also has other benefits to the institution like reducing costs, more efficient collaboration among HR groups, gaining visibility and acti activities, et cetera. But do keep in mind, the move to shared services is not required to leverage uh, an application like HR Help Desk. The system supports an HR model that fits your institution. So let's, let's, let's talk, uh, let, let's, let's, uh, let's talk more about some of these areas. So moving into t in, towards shared services, this is often the first transitionary move that, that an institution will make. That is for institutions where a shared services model, model is viable. But again, it doesn't necessarily have to be part of the part of the mix. If it is, it is often paired with the implementation of HR help desk to help facilitate that transition. And it's a very nice product to, to help uh, in, in that transition process. Either way, the model you have, uh, you move to is typically the basis for subsequent trends that, that I'll be talking about here. So opti from an optimization perspective, we, we, with a move to shared services or, or in other HR models or business processes, we want to have efficient processes. I think that goes without saying. Whatever model you're in, you want lower cost tier one resources leveraged to handle and resolve the bulk of those inquiries. Typically, we see around 80% that should be resolved by 80% of the inquiries resolved by a, a tier one level resource. And that does, and what that does is it frees up the tier two or tier three senior level resources so they can work on more strategic initiatives or work on, on some of the more complex issues that a tier one person couldn't, couldn't work on. But to take it even further with a tool like HR Help Desk that is integrated with self-service capabilities, you can let the employees or faculty answer their own questions using an integrated knowledge base. Tier zero resolution, it's very important. From an automation perspective, automation is an easy way to improve efficiency and provide better services. Processes that are very labor intensive can be automated and leverage channels like self-service to streamline process. And there's cost savings to doing so because you're more efficient. From a risk perspective, tracking activities in a centralized, secure application decreases risk to the institution and will improve service. You know, each issue an employee reported, when it was reported, what was done with it, what was the outcome, who worked it and, and when it was done. That's powerful information to have and can be used to minimize risk in the organization. And all of this really leads to improved reporting and an analytics. You get clear pictures of what's going on in the organization and you know what types of issues that are going, uh, that are going on and who's working on what. Then you, use, then you can use that information to educate, communicate and better manage your HR organization. Since you're all attending this webinar, you likely have some kind of initiative to enhance your service delivery. Um, service delivery improvements is the number three initiative according to the 2013-2014 HR system survey. Institutions are investing in improving service by means of trans transitioning to sh shared services model with an HR help desk application because there's proven benefits for doing so, some of which I've already described and I'm going to talk about a, a few more here. So why, why is the centralized HR help desk important and, and what are the benefits? Um, a centralized shared service HR application like HR Help Desk is a critical uh, piece as it helps facilitate consistent answers. It can help automate and standardize processes. It helps ensure follow-up and, and helps you manage your organization better, all of which leads to an improved service, as I mentioned before. Uh, and it, it increases visibility on what's happening in the organization. 
And obviously, cost savings is a very important piece to this to this product, and and, that, and there's, that's a big benefit to the product. Um, HR Help Desk can reduce costs in a variety of ways. For example, less senior resources can uh, answer more questions with it, with utilizing the integrated knowledge base in the system. They'll have a tool that can coach them to ask the right questions so they don't have to involve that senior staff, which are the highest cost method of ser service delivery. And as I mentioned before, employees can also be directed to leverage those self-service capabilities like the searchable employee facing knowledge base to answer their own questions instead of calling in HR. Again, tier zero resolution. And that is the lowest cost HR service that you can provide to your employees. So what is HR Help Desk? I, I wanna make sure that, that everyone understands. I, I keep mentioning that. HR Help Desk is a PeopleSoft application. It's a module within PeopleSoft CRM, similar to the way that Benefits is a module in, in HR and payroll is a module in HCM. And it's tightly integrated with PeopleSoft HCM, or it's also it can be integrated with eBusiness Suite as well, if that's what uh, HR application you're using. So those integrations are pre-delivered. You don't need to spend time developing them. It's the only application on the market that comes with those pre-delivered integrations. We'll be showing you a few pieces of that tight integration shortly here in the demo, but I uh, wanted to explain that a bit. So as you can see, it's not just one specific application. It's a robust, extensive suite of functionality supporting multiple channels that are tied in a streamlined and consistent case logging and resolution process. So on the left, you see the various intake channels it supports, phone, inbound, outbound email, self-service, chat. Those are the common channels. It can also integrate to other systems as needed through the PeopleSoft's robust integration framework. In, inbound requests typically start with that 360 degree view, uh, which is a holistic picture of that employee. We're gonna show you this in a few minutes. and includes a section of profile information that can be used for caller validation. It can also show, it also shows a listing of their interactions with HR, their case history in other words. The 360 represents real-time job data, benefit enrollments, including dependents, their last paycheck, absence data, and a listing of direct reports if they happen to be a manager, all of which is pulled real-time and is secured utilizing the security you already have set up in HR. So this is delivered and it's the only product with a 360 degree view of an employee that's integrated to HR. Again, we'll show you this in a few minutes. At the center of all this functionality is the robust case management capabilities. So just to level set and make sure you understand, cases simply represent an inquiry, a question, or a request. It's a generic term to, to kind of represent all of those. Other systems uh, may, may call it tickets or service requests, et cetera. It's, it's one and the same. So the case management portion of HR Help Desk includes functionality to enable the HR reps to quickly log a wide range of case types. Cert, they can search through an integrated knowledge base for how-to guides, policies, procedures, forms, etc. And it also includes robust configurable workflow capabilities to help facilitate processes like autom automated uh, email notifications for assignment or on uh, case creation or closure, that sort of thing. Another nice feature of the case management are the HR action links. People, uh, customers that we work with really like these because it, 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 they're, they're, they improve efficiency. What they do is they take you directly into the H from HR help desk. It takes you directly into the HR system so you can make any changes and or perform additional research without having to sign back in, navigate to the page, search for that employee, etc. It happens within one click. And that's all the result of the, the tight knit integration between HR help desk and, uh, and the HCM system. So integrated and delivered with HR help desk uh, is a newly redesigned HR service center. Uh, represented by the, the web service icon. It's a robust portal for employees to search through content, see their recent cases, look at known system issues and more. We're gonna show you that in just a few minutes. But some other capabilities that, that are included in HR Help Desk uh, include an, an integrated chat uh, capability, inbound email processing that can automatically generate cases from emails or faxes that might come in from like a write fax mailbox, and the ability to integrate with your phone system uh, in common systems like Cisco and Avaya. So, and then the end result of all this, you're, you're able to log cases, you're able to manage your workflow, you can utilize the knowledge base. The end result is that you have this data in the system. It's all tracked and resolved in HR help desk. 
so that that data that you capture is reportable so you can use use it to identify trends within the employee population about who's reporting what and and it can also help you manage your service center giving you visibility into who's working on what just a couple more slides and we'll jump into the, the demo because that's where that's where you'll see it so as you saw from the last side there's a lot of uh, functionality to help desk this product has been chosen to be the cornerstone of the HR departments because it's tightly it's highly versatile meaning it can and currently is used by all groups of HR no matter uh, no matter what model that you're currently in it can definitely be used to facilitate the transition to a shared services uh, migration if that's if that's what you're looking for uh, but if you're look if you have uh, say a dispersed model I'm going to be talking about that in the next slide it can certainly be used as, as there and the reason it can be it's so versatile is uh, number one because it's uh, it's tightly integrated with HCM so it's a nice complement but it also has security features that enable it to be used by groups like employee relations and leave of, leave of absence and and it's been developed over the last 10 plus years based on feedback from organizations so there's a large customer base that you have opportunity uh, to collaborate with. So today, although we're, you know, we're kind of talking with a, a bit of a HR shared services spin and how, how it can be leveraged, it, it can be leveraged. It's not just for that model. Uh, it's actively being used by many institutions in a variety of HR models from distributed to true shared services. I wanted to point that out so that you all understand its versatility. It can be configured the way that your organization is structured today, and it can adapt and grow over time as your organization evolves. So some groups that, uh, that, that typically use HR help desk and how are they organized? Um, we, uh, fr frankly, it's totally up to you. There's really no re required structure. This, this slide shows typical HR groups that we see utilizing the system, but it's by no means a complete list. Oftentimes we see a tiered structure where like a tier one group handles initial intake, calls, cases, uh, or emails, self-service cases, et cetera, and will attempt to resolve. And if they can't or shouldn't resolve it, they can leverage Tr uh, training on business process or utilize the knowledge base to coach them on who the group who should be reassigned and what information should they capture from that person so you can leverage the the knowledge base from that capacity and then a tier two group like payroll benefits or employee relations can take take ownership of that case and, and, and manage it to resolution ultimately HR help desk can be configured to your, fit your needs and, and should reflect your current or desired HR model its configurability allows you to change your to your institution as your organizational needs evolve. So you may be wondering what types of cases institutions log in HR Help Desk. Here are a few examples. Um, benefits group is a very common uh, group to use the system. They, they track inquiries around medical and dental coverage, life events, issues with enrollment, things like that. Whereas payroll tracks case types pertinent to their area, inquiries like incorrect paycheck, direct deposit issues, garnishments, compensation tracks, requests for job evaluation, spot bonuses, and other groups like training can track requests for trainings, issues with accessing training sites, things like that. Um, the point is each of these groups are different in what they support, yet they can capture and record these inter interactions through a consistent process. Employee relations is another group that commonly uses HR help desk, and they can use help desk to keep track of and document issues like attendance, leave requests, requests for accommodation, or reported discriminations or harassments, and even uh, requests to work on uh, workforce related changes. So again, very versatile and, and diverse in what, it, what the system can track. So th this is the last slide that I have. The, the, the reason that groups like employee relations can use HR because is really because of its delivered security features secured cases, application security, 360 degree view security, automated workflow, and so on. Uh, this system can be leveraged and has been leveraged by many institutions in both higher ed and other industries to track an incredibly wide range of issues and requests and questions that your organization may receive. So hopefully this gave you a good understanding of how help desk can be and is leveraged uh, to help your HR organization. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Hillary to demonstrate uh, some of the impressive features of Help Desk. We'll need to keep it at a bit high level in this demonstration to show some of the major pieces, but we'd be happy to show you more in a follow-up session if you like. So, Hillary, I'm going to pass it over to you. Fabulous. Can you hear me, Keegan? I can hear you just fine. Give me one second. Great.
Yep. Yeah, no. It's going right over to you. Thank you, Hillary. Okay, you're welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. And Keegan, I just want to make sure that you can see my screen. Yep, looks good. Wonderful. Okay, everybody. Well, I'm excited to show you an overview of our PeopleSoft HR help desk for the next 20 minutes. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to log in as from an agent-facing perspective to start. I'm logging in as somebody named Carmela Jackson, and she's an agent. And what we're going to see in a moment is something I like to call the dashboard or line of sight. And what can we see in terms of being that specialist, that agent? Note that when we look at the dashboard, which is rendering right now, it's delivered with a variety of page lists of information so that it can give you information from an analytical perspective. These are based on what we call pivot grids. So if there is anybody on the meeting today that is used using our latest uh, tool set with PeopleSoft, this might look familiar. Now, we deliver these page lists as well as if you're in a managerial role in the world of help desk, you'll have the same page lists or pivots of information, except a few additional ones. So we deliver things like my case backlog on the left-hand side of the screen, and we'll scroll down a little bit. So how important is it for you to get information? We bring this information right to your doorstep. You can what we call pivot the grid, if you will, on the top left. So my case backlog, you can pivot this grid. And certainly, for those that are recognized and understand our tool set at this point with PeopleSoft, you can certainly use the same tool set, same reporting tools, so that you can then manipulate existing pivot grids or reports and then save it as something else that you prefer. But the nice thing is that you do not have to start from scratch. But there's more to that. We provide you information, which is important to give you line of sight, but then what do you need to do? You need to take action. So for example, from this example here under my case backlog, I can notice that I've got three cases, high priority cases, in fact, that are backlogged. I'm hovering over and I see that. Well, that's wonderful, but now you want to maybe take action. What are those cases? And maybe I then need to drill in further. With our pivot grids on this dashboard, you're able to then drill in to the pivot grid such that it will open up a new window for you, a modal window, so that you then see the cases. What you should see on your screen right now is that it brought in front of the window behind it those three high priority cases that are backlogged. And now, as that specialist and or manager, I then see those specific cases. I can further drill in to take action or perhaps drop it into Excel with the icon that says download maybe print it off and go down the hall or email that to somebody that you need. Giving you this delivered dashboard information, analytical information, to give you information, insight, if you will, to what's going on, and then being able to take action. We also deliver, in the center you see my agent, my cases, that I can see the variety of cases that I'm currently working on, some summary detail, and the status important to see what's going on, why well, I don't want to have to navigate to multiple places. I can click on the more tab and that just opens up more detail behind it when it was created and the priority. I'm also able to filter that information as well, last 30 days modified and so forth. Beyond that, from here, I can go ahead and search cases and I can have save searches as well, as well as adding a case from this area. So. The HR Help Desk Agent and or Manager Dashboard, line of sight, leading, to, leading you to action to get the job done and do support your role for your organization. Now, I could have created a case from there, but I prefer to go ahead and I need line of sight in a different way, which brings me to what we call our Worker 360 Degree View. So the use of this is if somebody is calling in and you want to identify them, so they identify themselves, and we've got multiple fields under advanced search as well. So let's suppose that somebody is calling in, and you want to recognize who they are. So that person, you could ask their first name, last name, type in whatever you may know. Now keep in mind to what Keegan mentioned earlier, one of the other complements to our core HR help is the ability to have, say, CTI integration or caller telephonic integration. If you have that ability, when we go into the 360, 
that technology will automatically populate the 360 and bring it to your screen, which you should see right now. I can see information on the top that Antonio Santos is the caller. So at this point, as that agent, as that specialist, I can verify a few more pieces of information. I can say to Antonio, well, can you please tell me your employee ID? You might want to ask the address and so forth. Speaking to the integration, this is all coming over from HR. So think about the efforts, the things that you don't have to build. You hire folks in your human resources. And now if they have questions, they can be rendered and be viewed within HR Help Desk. You're not building an interface. You don't have to match up security from one system to another. This is building upon existing security from your HR system. So you can also mention that you have line of sight of all interactions and so forth. So I can see all interactions that transpired. On the top left, I can see that everything that's going on. Well, from an age perspective, perhaps I see some cases that are here, and perhaps he's all about something going wrong with the employee stuff purchase plan deduction. Think of whiteboarding in the world of IT so you can support global cases. Then all I need to do as a specialist is simply add a child case. And then, when the main issue is resolved, guess what happens? You close that parent case, and all the children or the child cases will then close and notify us as the employees so we know what's going on. But there's a better line of sight that you'll see as the employee from a self-service perspective in a few minutes. What I can also see if I go back on my case scenario on the left-hand side, I can see that I've got three closed cases in Antonio, and it renders on the right. So perhaps this person is calling a lot at answer shopping. So he says that he's calling about leave of absence, issue of leave of absence. I don't know how to find my information. Well, I say to this person, well, have you called us before? Well, Antonio says, well, I haven't. But you and I both know by looking at this screen that Antonio's call, there's two cases that were closed and resolved. So that we can try to help that employee, or perhaps there's some training that's needed within the department that maybe they're not giving the right answers. Line of sight, and I see that I have two open cases as well. And then I can render and then drill in further to that information. Another highlight, if I scroll down, we talked about integration again to HR. I'm seeing real-time information here about the job, the paid summary information. I'm scrolling down. The screen should be moving. Benefits information. So this could be the first way that I resolve a question. Again, I reiterate, security. The fact that I can see pay summary detail or benefits detail as I scroll down is based on the security that's already built from HR. So if you're a specialist that maybe should not be seeing information, you will not see that benefits information if you're not supposed to have security. So 360 line of sight, as well as if you're a manager, you can be calling on behalf of your employee. A classic example of somebody, maybe somebody's um, goes on FMLA sooner than you thought. So you're calling perhaps on behalf of Reza, and I can add a case on behalf of my direct report. So Antonio calls in relative to Reza. I click on add case, and it fills in that it's reported by Antonio on behalf of Reza. And all that information can be tracked. 360 minus side integration. This is also the first place that you can actually create a case. So if Antonio is calling and he says, I need to know if my spouse is covered for benefits. My internet went down at home, so I can't use my self-service, and that's why I'm calling. So you can help them out and look at the 360 and say, well, well I do see that Megan, your spouse, is covered. And I happen to also see that your child, Marguerite, it's also covered for your benefits from your employee self-service. So this is kind of a scenario where you don't have any follow-up. Easy question, you don't have to go to HR, you don't have to follow up, there's no tasks to manage. So I want to quickly create a case from my 360. Well, all I have to do is go to my action and add case. Now in this example, it says generically, it says just benefits inquiry. It could say payroll, it could say whatever you like. And at this point, I can easily I answer the question. I go to the action area, and right now what's happening is the system is creating a case and assigning identification or a case ID for that information. And it's going to be stored in the system and rendered also so the employee can see it within the HR Service Center, aka self-service. 
stamp here and I can go in if I need to reopen it. I can. But right now it's resolved. The other way of agent facing case creation, I can see what was the easiest way to do this. Well, I'm going to go back to my 360 and at this point, here's some other examples. I'll say to Antonio, Antonio, is there something else I can help you with since I have you on the phone? And the caller might say, well, yes, there is. This is a scenario, another way of creating a case. I need a little bit more research. All I need to do is go to my actions and go add age for help desk. And at this point, we're going to come to a blank case area that needs to track more information. So on the top of the screen, you should see case tab, solutions and summary, and so forth. Now, one thing to mention is the fact that I see this screen with a variety of click points, like global case, securing a case, a variety of tabs. Top of the toolbar here where it says correspondence, this is template driven, configurable. Again, it's configurable. It's a matter of check boxing, selecting check boxes behind the scenes that say, I want to see something on this template. And then it's random. You don't have to be an IT person. Very simple to follow. So another example of creating a case. I'll give two more examples, and then we'll kind of stick on this for another two minutes. And then we'll go into an area called the HR Service Center. Well, here's Antonio on the top left. He's the caller. Bottom right here, I'm highlighting with my mouse, is problem summary. Now, I can show this in manually if I wish. I'm not going to do that. It looks like I've got some action rates, Keegan mentioned this earlier, that will take you directly to PeopleSoft HR or, P or EBS HR as well. The deliver integration to EBS is if you're an R12.1 or higher. So, what I'd like to do is, one of the beautiful things is when we create a case, we try to give you the tools to expedite the process. You certainly can fill in the case type the visibility, category on the bottom of the screen, which will then dictate the specialty type, which will then dictate the detail type. But why not have the screen automatically do the work for you? Let me show you an example. We used to still take the ability for you to automate in a lot of different ways. One way is with a tool called Quick Code. You can create Quick Codes that can fill out a screen, a Quick Code that can actually top up solutions for you. So, for example, if I want to say, let's suppose you'd like to do an annual salary change. As an example, that fills out the screen. Or, perhaps what I'd like to do is do update personnel information. Now, something else has changed. I don't know if you noticed that. Let's talk about that real quick. It filled out the screen for me. It filled in the category in the right-hand side that says employee management. It says it's personal information, what priority, and so forth. It's going to save the case. You may see that there's a link here that says personal data. It can recommend a solution or actually take you into HR. I'm clicking on personal data and the screen is changing. What it's doing now, it's taking me directly into, in this example, PeopleSoft Human Resources. Now, this is an example of integration that goes directly to HR. Now, this, the other thing that can automatically happen is that it's suggesting a solution, a piece of knowledge, a data sheet, a script that will help me follow and talk to the caller. And what it does, it takes me directly into human resources. This happens to be an example of PeopleSoft. For those on the phone, if you're using EBS, this could be your EBS system. That's great. I can see information, make any changes based on the call. All I need to do is close that window, and I'm back right into the HR help desk. And as a result, it will case, it will create information and track areas that I went to. It will timestamp data as well. The last kind of example I'd like to share with you I'm going to go back to the top of the screen, and I'm going to go back to the person's 360. And then we'll stay on the case just for a second, and then we're going to go into some self-service. Well, the person has another case, and this is an example without using what we call quick codes. <clears throat> What's important to human resources? Sometimes you have follow-up. Think about if you have, say, somebody breaks their leg, there's workers' compensation. So what I'd like to do is create a case, maybe based on workers' comp. We'll call it program and service. I'm not using a quick code and I'm off the 
during the case. I'll select wellness program. I'm going to select workers comp. Sometimes you have to have workflow. I don't workflow, pardon me. There's work tasks, right? So think about what has to happen as a result of the type of case you're tracking. So what I like to do is just save this. The system has a brain. I can fill out this information. So I'm just going to put in workers' compensation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this case. And you should see a pop-up window on your side that will happen. And what is going to happen is it suggests some solutions. So Keegan, may I just verify with you? Can you see this pop-up window? Yes, I can. Thank you. Fabulous. So what's just happened? The system not only can fill a screen for you so that you don't have to put in information to expedite the process. Now I'm not sure what to do. Maybe I'm you. Well, the person's calling in about a workers' comp issue. Hmm. I've got all these alerts. I'm going to try one of these assessments. So what it's going to do is we facilitate the system to create a pop-up window or just a single recommended solution. I'm going to close this window right now. And that solution can actually be what we call a script. And it helps somebody from a training perspective. So if I'm new, I don't want to get off the phone and ask somebody for help. I can say, I'm talking to Antonio. Mr. Sanders, do you need immediate assistance? I can put in some comments that's shared, that's saved. Immediate assistance, and it tells you, it renders what's the next piece of the puzzle here. <laughs> Call 911. Oh, no, I don't need immediate help. Let me go back. Oh, that was wrong. Okay, so you don't need immediate attention. Now, notice it tells you where you are on the left-hand side. And it further then dictates the script. Well, Antonio has to go. He has an emergency. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save this for later so that when he calls back, the next specialist can just easily see on the 350 the case and take the baton and go forth and help out Antonio when he calls back. But yet there's one other piece of the puzzle here. Something's happened on something called the task tab. What do you have to do today if you have a solicit something in HR in employee relations that says there's an issue, there's FMLA, there's a workers comp, and I have to now be reminded of a meeting I have to have. I have to get a document. I have to get a meeting with Antonio. The system not only can automate filling in the screen, automate a suggested solution, but it can actually render automated tasks. Think about the sticky notes you might have or having to set things up and reminders. This is an example that the system can automate. The engine says, make these tasks happen, whether it's a meeting, an appointment, a phone call. You can have reminders. Does this repeat? And even add other people to this task. So now you don't have to manage your tasks. The system is doing it for you. This can really help your organization. Agent-facing information, task management, and then certainly within the system that you're going to see in self-service is, you know, you may not have the answers. You may not have the system automating the solution and recommending those solutions for you. So certainly, you can then have your FAQs. You can look up frequently used solutions or simply type in something and do a search. And then it can bring up those solutions that can be a link within to a PDF, it can render and spider out to a website. Solution, solution searching, agent facing. To round out the presentation, I'd like to end from a HR service center perspective. Just to change the environment for one moment. And now I'm changing roles and I'm going into, I'm going in as an employee for self-service. And Keegan, I'll just check with you one more time. Can you see my screen? Yep, looks good. Thank you so much. So what we're looking at is the HR Service Center, one-stop place for we as employees, we as a worker, to go in, have a line of sight, to really help ourselves. I don't want to make a phone call. I want to have access to information. So let's take a look. On my dashboard, I as the employee have quick 
links. I could look up a troubleshooting guide similar to this script I just showed you. And the information that I have access to may be a solution that I see, but maybe I'm not going to see the same solution the specialist, the benefits expert saw. So you can segment solutions and secure that. Maybe some things only are visible to the agent and some things are just visible to the employee. FAQs, I can find my cases. If I can't find a solution, I can create a case and have that go to what we call a provider group, get it automatically routed to the proper person. Integration to human resources. So this is like self-service. So we're using other areas in HR for self-service that takes the information there. Let's jump over a minute to the FAQs. So these are my FAQs of information. Known issues. Those are those global cases, right? So before I even want to make a phone call, I can see what's those known issues. Hmm. I can see there's an issue with salary increments not on pay slips, but I want to see everything that's going on, so I'm going to click on view all. These are all those global cases. And what we're looking at here is I have the ability to look into the detail of that information. What's the case all about? A global case. And you know what? I need to be notified. So I don't have to see what's going on. If I know my issue was employee stock purchase plan enrollment was based on this issue right here, all I need to do is click on notify, and I will automatically notify when the issue is resolved. I want to go back to my service center. If I still can't find my issue and it's not there, maybe I want to do a search. I can browse by topic. I can also do a search similar to the way the agent did this. If I type in the word, let's say benefits, it'll do a search. The solution, as well as the agent could have done this as well, is our faceted search engine. It's letting me know everything related to the word benefits. It lets me render on the left-hand side that there's seven cases out there. I've got 36 solutions relative to the word benefits, and I've got one troubleshooting guide. I can drill into one of those solutions, and then it can give you that detail. This is very basic, but this can have colors, whatever wording you want. It can have a link to a website and a PDF document. Now, certainly, we've got some top solutions over here. And then lastly, if all fails, I want to say, gosh, I've got some recent cases here. I can look at my recent cases that are going on and see the status of that. But maybe I just need to go ahead and create a case. So similar to calling in, I don't want to call in. I just want to create a case. Now notice it knows if I am a manager, add a case to my direct reports. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to create a case for myself. And all I do is follow this. <clears throat> and I can create a case of information. And type in that detail. And follow, I can attach a file. And now, similar to the agent, here are those categories. So I can put in benefits, which then will dictate, okay, it's about FMLA. And what are those details? Just family leave. This is high priority. It is critical. This is critical, and it affects just myself. And I can go ahead and send and save this case. And what happens is I get my case number. It's been sent over and routed to the proper what we call provider group. And I can now manage that case and see what's going on. And I always have the ability to close the case. Continue looking at the solution as well as seeing who is that specialist working on this. And then if I need to, contact this contact that and saying, I need to hear from you. HR Service Center brings it all together for us as that employee to have a line of sight, to get our own answers, to reduce call volume, and to really be able to manage my, my work day as an employee and have the information that I need to get the answer that I need immediately, real time. And again, integrated with HR, EBS, and PeopleSoft HR. And I say thank you for that. And from here, what I'd like to do, Keegan, I'm going to send it back to you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. 
pass me control. Okay, there we go. All right, can you see this okay, Hillary? Just to check. I can. Okay, perfect. Um, just to look at it at the time, I think we're going to have to kind of breeze through these. But um, th thanks for that demo, Hillary. Now, now that you've seen the product, I just wanted to touch brief briefly on a, what uh, what typical impl implementations look like. We've, we've done a lot of implementations in Nature Help Desk, and they obviously range uh, si significantly. But I wanted to show you this chart because really when you look at this, these are the top issues when you're looking at look from a project perspective. What, what's the most important piece? And really, it's a common the, any project is a combination of people, the people who the, the, the project affects, process, how the software is going to be leveraged, and the technology. And you can see here that the top two thirds of, of this uh, this chart is that these any issues that are reported are people or process related. Technology is, isn't typically what makes implementations fail. So we, we've been very successful sticking to the guns that incorporating uh, robust change management, training, you know, appropriate staffing, and then executive support is all what makes uh, projects successful in our experience. So a few things to think about as you're looking to transition to a shared services and implement a central HR help desk. Think about questions like, what are your goals and objectives for the system for the HR? What, what structure are you going to look at? What populations do you want to support? What channels do you, are you going to be looking at? What group should use the system? That sort of thing. All of these things that you see here are, are questions and, and considerations that you want to think about and plan for in, in ahead. So we're, we're big on phasing implementations. Um, we the, the reason for this is, is specifically for change management. How much change can your institution handle at one time? We recommend phasing this functionality in as time progresses. Too often technology is implemented with good intentions, but it's overly complex, and that in turn uh, often leads to not well adopted software. So in the first phase, what we typically, you know, push change management, we get some base groups into the system, we focus on that case management, that core agent functionality, we need to be able to support all of those channels within the system before we can really, you know, get, get the get the buy in in, in, in that resolution. So we, we focus on case management, um, defining and building the robust knowledge base seems like it's easy, but in reality, it's one of the harder parts of the implementation. So that typically focuses on agent-facing content to start with. Um, we're, again, we're firm believing, believers in starting simple and growing over time. It's proven over and over to be successful. So the second phase typically happens three to six months later after an implementation. And that's where you start adding more advanced features like telephony integration, expanded reporting, email integration, more robust knowledge content, et cetera. And then the third phase, third phase is like the six to 12 month time frame. And again, more, more improvements, more analytics, more self-service capabilities. I, you know, I listed three examples here just for the sake of, uh, for, for, for an example, but oftentimes organizations can leverage the system after one, maybe two phases, and they're perfectly happy with util utilizing the system for years uh, with very little change. So before I send it over to Robin, just to, to, to look at the long-term roadmap, just a few more other things uh, to consider. Start, start change management early. De de develop a strategy for how to, get, how to leverage the tool. Develop what your 2B business processes are going to be and, and what should those business processes be as it relates to HR Help Desk and how can that be incorporated in. Walk th work through your knowledge strategy. Who will, who will manage it? Where does it? Where does the information come from? How is it managed going forward? And then what analytics are you looking for? That's uh, that can be crucial in identifying requirements in the system. So, and, and the final piece that, that we see very successful is use the delivered capabilities in the system. It's a system that can add significant value out of the box. Most clients have very li that we work with have very little customization to the delivered system. And this is important because it reduces the overall cost of the implementation. So just a quick uh, snapshot. These are some organizations that we've that we've worked with on various uh, various initiatives, and then these these are also uh, a listing of organizations that we've uh, worked with from a non higher ed service delivery perspective. Um, 
the, some, most of these are, uh, a lot of these are shared services, but not all. Some are distributed with HR generalists on site at various facilities. And I think this, what this really proves is that this, this system is versatile and, and it can be used no matter what HR model that you're looking at, whether it's shared services or whether it's, uh, uh, you know, another, uh, another model that you're currently in. So we have some customer examples. Uh, unfortunately, we ran out of time here. We can certainly provide you with, uh, with, with some information uh, about these if, you, if you'd like. Um, so I'd like to pass it over to Robin to talk about the, the, the long-term roadmap of HR Help Desk and some products that, uh, that Oracle is working on. So Robin, I'll go ahead and pass it over to you. Actually, Robin, can you can you take control of it? It's like it went over to Hillary. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Hold on one second. Okay. I sent it over to you, Robin. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, just to wrap up here, just a few minutes. Uh, I wanted to talk uh, about where we see HR help desk going with uh, with PeopleSoft. I think Hillary did a great job of giving you a, a, a tour of, um, of what HR help desk looks like today. In fact, we had a question about um, what version was being shown there on the release, and it was, I believe, we were showing 9.1. Uh, this summer, we came out with uh, with 9.2 with PeopleSoft, which was a huge release for us, not only for HR Help Desk, but also for HCM and all the other applications that we have. It's a game changer release for us uh, and for our customers and how they are able to deploy self-service uh, for, for their users. Um, as we talk about long term, what are we looking at with HR Help Desk? What's the roadmap look like? There's a lot of demand right now for, for this solution, um, mostly because if you spent even a day or a week in, in, in the shoes of an HR rep specialist shoes, you know that um, streamlining the process from the time a case is created, like Hillary was showing in the demo, to the time that it's closed, you could interact with a couple of different people, a couple of different groups, and a couple of different systems. So being able to streamline that is a huge, there's a huge demand to be able to streamline processes uh, with organizations and institutions. Uh, being able to provide self-service channels that Keegan talked about, where you have the millennials coming into the workforce and they're expecting to be able to find information on their own. They don't necessarily want to pick up the phone, um, but that's just not enough. We've got to also improve the productivity of having people uh, support those who like to pick up the phone and call and ask those types of HR-related questions. Uh, and then as Hillary mentioned, line of sight, case visibility, understanding where cases are coming from, what types of cases are being open, what are the traditional spikes in cases, um, and, and, and can, we, can we track back to where those cases come from to see if maybe it's policy driven that we can make some changes to prevent those cases from being created to begin with. Uh, and then there's just a strong value proposition for an HR help desk solution such as PeopleSoft. Uh, it doesn't matter whether your institution is a growing one or it's remaining stable, if it's going multinational, whether you're restructuring your workforce, or even if you're going to a, a shared service model like Keegan mentioned earlier, which is, tradition, is actually something that we know in the higher ed space, um, we, we have customers moving to that model, but it's, it's a trend that's that's in all other industries as well that I'm seeing in retail and healthcare. So uh, being able to support that model um, is, is key with, with HR Help Desk. Um, and then I just kind of put for fun here, does your leadership understand that HR cases are a different animal? They're not an IT case. You can't just take an IT solution and say, you know what, creating a case for my browser not working on my laptop is the same as a sexual harassment case that's being logged. They're not the same. They have different confidentiality requirements, data sensitivity, um, and, and different touch points among different people. Um, and the cases tend to stay open longer um, and need to reflect the change that can happen. So there's a number of things that are driving the growth and, and, and where we see us investing in HR Help Desk and creating, and we've created a roadmap as such. And with our roadmap, 
app. I mentioned 9Q was released this summer, a big game changer release for us and for our customers, but we're not stopping with that. We've got a, a roadmap of, uh, uh, we, we expect to deliver functionality a couple times a year, and we kind of look at each calendar year as a bucket, and each bucket is the types of functionality that we, we look to target uh, moving forward. So. Um, uh, our, our next release, we're looking at enhancing our Tier 0 knowledge base, which Keegan mentioned, huge uh, importance there, not only for allowing the, your, your, your uh, workforce to be able to search on information on their own and find it quicker and easily, but also the, the, to have that ownership on the rep side, the, the HR agent side, to be able to own that data and to be able to make sure they keep that data current because there's nothing more frustrating than having someone on the self-service side find the inf information that they need only to find out that it's circa 2005, right? You need to make sure that data is up to date. And uh, one way to do that uh, is through knowledge management, uh, knowledge case management through our, through our application. Uh, we're also supporting, we do support today and we'll continue to enhance uh, the sense of employee case information. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, HR cases can be very sensitive in nature, can include multiple people, uh, can drag on forever, right? And you need to be able to track that. And that and ultimately can include other other people uh, to have visibility into cases such as lawyers and counsel and uh, authorities. So uh, there's a, a level of sensitivity that uh, we manage through our system and that we continue to uh, enhance through the focus groups of our customers. Uh, we continue to focus on integration. A lot of the touch points that Hillary showed you are supported, delivered integration. There's no customization involved uh, between HR Help Desk and PeopleSoft HR, as well as Oracle HR if you're one of those two customers. Um, and a couple other areas, including reporting, being able to show trends and analysis of the different types of cases that are opened, when they're typically opened, who opens them, what, what groups within the organization t tends to open them, can you track them back to a policy, maybe some of your policies are vague and that's generating questions uh, related to those types of policies, all of that is within our, within our roadmap moving forward. Uh, and in social, social collaboration lends itself great to, um, to HR help desk, not only on the side of being able to provide uh, self-service um, um, subject matter experts, but also case management, being able to open a case and manage a ca case across uh, multiple reps. Uh, and mobile is huge. For us, in 2014, PeopleSoft will begin delivering our new PeopleSoft user experience that is device agnostic. That is to say, regardless of whether you're, um, you're at your desk, at your desktop, interacting with PeopleSoft, or maybe you're on your, on your phone, on your way to work, uh, maybe you're in a classroom using your laptop, or maybe you're at home on a Sunday afternoon using your tablet. Regardless of the device and where you are, you'll have the same user experience with PeopleSoft, and that goes across all PeopleSoft applications, and HR Help Desk is part of that. Um, and then finally, mobile. Your know, mobile drives a lot of all the device uh, agnostic uh, a strategy that we have moving forward to be able to support mobile capabilities is, is, is on our roadmap as well. And just to wrap up here before we try to take some questions, and that is there's a couple different ways you can keep up to date with what's going on with PeopleSoft. It's great that we have uh, this webcast focused purely and squarely on HR Help Desk, um, but I do encourage you to take a, uh, take a look at our blog um, where we will post uh, different uh, items and issues that are coming up and function and deliveries that are coming up. The PeopleSoft92.com website is for PeopleSoft customers. You don't have to be an HR Help Desk customer, just a PeopleSoft customer. We will access details there. We have a PeopleSoft YouTube channel. Um, and then a quick plug for Alliance, which uh, PeopleSoft typically has a good representation there, including um, uh, doing some presentations. We'll certainly talk about HR Help Desk there, so uh, please stop by and say hello.